Listen to Cool Sentences, a fiction podcast recorded in Phuket, Thailand. Hey there, welcome to Cool Sentences, a fiction podcast featuring cool sentences and the tales of Johnny Wisely. I'm your co-host, Vlad Forgatch. Mr. D is on assignment. So, the fictional character Johnny Wisely is here to tell us about his latest episode. It's not often I get to talk to a fictional character, but thanks to the little voices in my head, here he is. Well, hello, Vlad. So what's going on in the world of Johnny Wisely? Well, as you know, Vlad, my world is about to be invaded by aliens from a far-off planet. So in order to protect ourselves, we grow roses. So anything new? Well, after a long absence, my most prized possession is back in my garden. Well, isn't that just marvelous? And you'll tell us all about it in today's episode? It would be a pleasure, Vlado. About Martha by Derek Nyberg As you may have guessed, I love my garden and all the things in it. My garden has a goldfish pond surrounded by blue bonnets, geraniums and sunflowers. Nearby there's a small brick wall to keep the cats happy. My two cats, Orson and Bobo, love to perch on the wall, watching the fish with eager eyes. In the corner of my garden, I have a leprechaun statue. And next to the leprechaun is a gold Buddha that Martha brought back from one of her travels. I wonder how the Buddha feels having no one to meditate with now that Martha's gone with Bill. The leprechaun seems fine, as he belongs to me, but I've always wondered how my leprechaun felt about having someone as spiritual as Buddha for a neighbor. Does the Buddha appreciate the joy my leprechaun brings me every morning when I water my roses and see his mischievous smile? Yesterday, a yellow manila envelope came from Martha's lawyer's office. I didn't mind that she wanted her Buddha, but her letter concluded that the leprechaun and the Buddha made for what the lawyer called a a, a karmic pair and couldn't be separated. I know you're thinking, imagine, what if Martha and I had kids? It's all relative, I suppose. Giving up something you love, whether it's a leprechaun or or a child, is one one of the greatest tragedies of life. I loaded the leprechaun and the Buddha into a box, alongside many other boxes filled with Martha's clothes and such. The delivery truck drove away, and although I was left alone in my garden surrounded by my brilliant sunflowers, nothing could brighten my mood. For years, that leprechaun brought me rainbows full of happiness, the kind of joy that comes with a vision, not hope, but a sense that rules are illusionary and a gold shilling could bounce up off the street and into your pocket at any time. My leprechaun made me feel grateful just to be alive, just to be in the game, and that's why Martha took it. A declaration of war it was. And, sad to say, it was the maid who found Martha's dead corpse on the kitchen floor, which must be the worst occupational hazard possible. For, For maids, that is. Martha's head had been crushed by the Buddha, which had somehow fallen down from above. I suppose Martha, or the maid, had put my leprechaun side by side with the Buddha on a high shelf and had forgotten about them. When I attended Martha's funeral, I couldn't help but notice the gardens next to the gravesite were full of leprechaun statues, which made sense. Not a Buddha in sight. You see, it's illegal to smuggle Buddhas out of their home countries. One Sunday morning, karma came full circle. There was a knock on the door and on the landing stood the delivery driver. In his arms, he held my leprechaun. His boss told him to take it to the dump, but the good man remembered how upset I was and brought it back. After a cup of tea, the good chap left, and I observed my leprechaun now back in his corner of the garden. My leprechaun's smile had changed, It it seemed even more mischievous. What has he been up to, I thought. Was he part of a karmic team that put a fix on Martha? Perhaps the combined weight of the two statues caused the accident. I took a long sip of tea. 
Maybe the Buddha wanted to return to his temple. Seems logical. And my leprechaun was trying to give Buddha a helpful nudge, not realising Martha was underneath painting of plastic flowers. Certainly plausible. After all, leprechauns love to travel, while Buddhas much prefer sitting under trees. So my leprechaun encouraging Buddha to get up and get a move on made perfect sense. And this I told an imaginary judge and jury. I felt a sudden draft as I finished my tea. In my mind's eye, I could see the Buddha fallen from the shelf. Poor Martha. So, in the end, I chalk it up to karmic pairing results in domino effect. One thing's for sure, we never really know how we affect others, do we? Okay, bye for now. Johnny Wisely. Sentences, a fiction podcast recorded in Phuket, Thailand. Jana Wisely. Jana Wisely.